acknowledge some of our own church children. As you all know, we have completed another school year. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Some of us will have to attend the school, but that's okay, praise the Lord. So I'm going to acknowledge some students for what they've done towards the end of their school year. And the first student I'm going to call is Daniel Cunningham. <laughs> Daniel received a reading award from Scholastics. So if anybody knows anything of the damn children that have Scholastics, they are a huge book company. And they furnish a lot of books to our schools all over the country. And his award was presented to him by his teacher, and he won a reading award from the last days um, this past May. Congratulations, Daniel. <laughs> and he has also won an Eagle Feather Award. This acknowledges that Daniel Cunningham has successfully been recognized for being an outstanding student. The harder I try, the higher I fly. <laughs> Thank you. 
Amen. Yes. Isaiah Meridian will be taking his graduate walk. He graduated from pre-K and now he is going to kindergarten.
I remind you that not all our children are out there on the street doing bad stuff. There are some students that are still doing good. There are some students that are still doing good in school. Amen. And we need to continue to encourage them. It's so easy when they do something wrong. We, you know, we highlight the wrong and we get hard on them. And, you know, so we need to turn that around and when they do something good, encourage them. Encourage them to continue. Because when they grow up, they're going to do the things that they see you and I do. So we got to live our life uh, as models to them. Amen. If not, Hollywood is going to tell them who they are. And it may not be who you think your child is. Amen. But if you don't tell them who they are or train them up to be who you would like them to be, the world is going to train them up. There's so many things out there in the world that it's so easy to get caught up into. You know, they're all on summer vacation and you know, it's just kind of easy, it's easy, it's, you never know. There's so many things out there, so many elements that, uh, that they get caught up into. So, and their minds are young, their minds are hungry to learn. This is the age where they call on so much. I mean, so as much as possible that we can teach them. And never think that the child is too young to learn. Trust me, they know a lot of things that you and I don't know. <laughs> All right, they know a lot of things, right? I have a cell phone and my son knows a whole lot more with a cell phone than I do. Every time my phone gets stuck, I just give it to him. All right, he wants a few buttons, give it back to me, I'm good to go. I don't know what I'm doing. You know, Bishop always talk about when he's on the computer, he got hang up, you know? Just call on the kids, they click, click, click. He's back and forth. You know, but we thank God for our children. The word of God will train them up in the ways of the Lord. Teach them the word of God. So that the word of God will dwell rich in them. As they get older, they will not uh, depart from it. Uh, I'm looking for the speaker and singer. Yeah, but we give God honor. We thank God for continuing to lift up our bishop and our pastor in your praise. They are getting up in age, they need a little bit more help than they used to when they were young like us. So let's continue to be patient with them, you know, but let's continue to encourage them. Encourage yourself as well. I mean, you never know when you're going to need some help. So let's continue to lift them up in prayer. When you don't see them here, it's not that they don't want to come. They're always going to be here, but there are times when they can't make it out. The pastor hurt herself yesterday. She will take it to the doctors and get taken care of. So let's come to the doctor in your prayers. Amen. Praise the Lord. As God's children, we sorrow as others do. Amen. We, we hurt just like others, you know, or you hit your finger, we all feel pain just like, just like others. You know, as long as we live in this world, we're going to have all these things come against us. But we trust that you, as we know God, we can bring our situations to him and allow him to take care of us. He promised his word that he will never leave us nor forsake us, but he will always be there for us. So when we are in trouble, amen, we know who we can call upon. Praise the Lord. The world doesn't always have the right answers that we need for life situations. But we know that the word of God, the word that is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged soul. The word of God will keep you. The word of God will satisfy you in this life. Praise the Lord. So let us continue to be to be on one accord. Amen. Let us continue to be on one accord in the things concerning our Lord and Savior. He's a God that does lie. He knows all things. He knows all he created you and I in his own image. Praise God. He put everything inside of us that we need to live a complete life here on earth. There's nothing that's too hard for him. Nothing catches him by surprise. Amen. So whatever situation you find yourself in, know that you can always call on him. You can bring it to him and rest assured that he will take care of it. Amen? Amen. With all, at this time, I'm going to invite you to stand with us.
as we bring our speaker for today, Pastor Susie Rogers. May the Lord Even I always pray and ask God, you know, 
you, wherever I go, even when I'm just going to the stores, you know, and truly when you go for the house of God, wherever you go in the house of God, you know, I always say, Lord, not, not knowing what, what, what you maybe ask, not knowing, but Lord, what do you have me? Give me a word, God. And I was, you know, praying, because, you know, you got to be able to minister to people, too, no, regardless. And it's not all about standing behind the pulpit. It's, it's about being ready for God at all times. Amen? Amen. So, what is that? He didn't give me anything. So that's why I'm like, when Brother Matt asked, I'm like, I'm like, you know, carry this Bible from Bible. So it's like, I need my baby Bible. You know what I'm saying? Praise God. So I just thank God that he's an on-time God. So this is finish your race. We're gonna. This is the title of finish your race because we need. Sometimes we forget what God, what God wants us to do. Sometimes you know situations come in our life, and sometimes we forget to pick it back up and go on. And God is a God that when He gives you something, He's not gonna say no. You can't do it. No, you're not gonna do it. It's just a matter of time when you have to do it, and it's a matter of time God filling you and teaching you. We got to have an open ear for God to teach us. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. So go to Hebrews 12, chapter 12, verse 1, please. And everything I do and everything I'm um, just basing in the Lord is having, having to keep the faith. Amen. I need to keep the faith. We need to keep the faith. No matter what we go through, we need to be, keep God's faith. Yes. And, it's, and it's like, you know, we may say we have faith, but when circumstances come, do we truly use our faith? Do we truly use the power that the Lord has given us? Amen. Amen. So let's just Go a little bit in Hebrews 12. And I'll be reading a little bit here and there. And start from verse 1. Wherefore, seeing, we also are compassed about, about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every way and the sin which do it so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. That's in the King James Version. I'm going to just go over to the Amplified chapter, Hebrews chapter 1. And Amplified Bible says, Therefore then, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses who have become testimony to the truth, let us strip off and throw aside every encumbrance unnecessary and that sin which so readily defies, defends, and clever, excuse me, and cleverly clings to and entangle us. And let us run with patient endurance and steady and active persistence. The appointed course of the race that is set before us. And we're going to go on to verse 2, um, Hebrews 12. Looking into Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your mind. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin, and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto us as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Six, for whom the Lord loveth he chastening and scourge every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God builds with you. As with sons, for what son is he whom the father chastens not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, 
then are ye bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them records. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of Spirit than live? For they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastity for the present seem to be joyous, 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 but grievous, nevertheless, after he yielded the peace, peaceful fruit of righteousness unto them which are exceedingly thereby. Amen? See, sometimes we, you know, as the scripture says, we listen to our fathers, we, you know, our earthly fathers. We listen to maybe our uncles that raised us, and we and we reference them. But a lot of times when we come to Jesus, we fight God. We don't go forth and just do what God wants us to do. We fight him, amen? We truly do, because if you don't think you fight him, it's when God tells you to do something you don't do. When God tells you to something, you fight, and you and you, you look for other ways to go around it. But I, I know for myself and my growth, I love when God corrected me when I was doing wrong. Because sometimes we don't even know that we're doing wrong. Amen? So when God corrects you, it feels like, oh man, you feel all weighted down and you feel just, you know, um, the cares of the world and you just feel so heavy. But God don't want us to be heavy. He wants us to give all those burdens and all those weir weirdness, uh, weariness to him. And going back to verse, um, chapter 12, 1, it says, well, Wherefore, seeing, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. And let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do it so easily beset us. And let us run the patient and race that is before, before us. And a lot of times, like I said, we don't see our sin. And sin comes in so many fashions. Sin comes in just your heart of thinking things wrong about people. Sin comes in just the little thing when, you know, I pass by my, my uh, fellow sister or brother and don't even acknowledge him just for a second. You know, sometimes, you know, you may say, if I come in a room of uh, people and you can't go around, well, give away, hallelujah, a praise, amen, when you can't touch everyone and brotherly love. So we gotta be careful how we go forward because God sees everything and sometimes it's the little sins that truly weigh us down. And sometimes if you don't know, that's God. He, he'll tell you, amen? And it's, it's good when God corrects us. We need the Lord to correct us. We need to know when to let all those things go. And I know sometimes you just have to surrender. And sometimes when you need to know things, just surrender and take all God. And sometimes we say, oh Lord, you know, I want to be like you, Jesus. I want to do all that I can do for you, God. But then you don't want to go through the trials and tribulation. Then you want to give up. But you want to, God says, you need to finish what you started. Amen? And a little small testimony, I do have a couple more scriptures, and it will go. Um, Acts 20 was God, um, so verse 21. But my little testimony, praise the Lord, is like I said, God just gave me this because, you know, all that don't know, all who know, and all this don't think that truly how much that I was afflicted. A mechanical lift fell on my back four years ago. And a girl pulled it off my coworker, but she wouldn't tell the truth and say that it truly happened. So I had to go through a lot. But God was with me. But it was still hard and struggle, but I still had to push my way through, no matter what. And it was a lot of weight upon me, not because I lost my faith, not because I was doing wrong, but because I had to go through something and God allowed me to go through it. Amen? Just like Job was stripped and the Lord even told me, he said just in many times, the Lord done gave me that as an example of Job. Job went through a lot. Job lost a lot, but Job loved God. And, he, and, the, and his wife said, why don't you just curse God and his, you know, brothers and wives, they're looking at him like, what have you done? And that's, 
you know, I didn't ever feel that way, like I've done anything, but it was like, I questioned God, why? Why Why do I have to go through this? Or why do I have to go through it so long? It was four years. Four years. So four years, I had an affliction. Praise God. But my strength was Jesus. My strength was knowing that I continue wanting to push my way through. Praise the Lord. So we want to continue to persist in what God has called us to do. And to know and, and, and to believe God and just to trust God and have faith. Just because you have a little standstill or whatever happens in your life, you know, make sure it's just something that happens and God is teaching you. And a lot of things, times when I go through things, I just say, Lord, okay, what can I learn out of this? And I found, you know, and I found myself through it. It's all for a purpose. It's all for a purpose to help somebody else. The ministry that we're in is helping the homeless, amen, in, in, in Winston, North Carolina. You know, a lot of people, they just kind of give up on God. Just because they have inflictions, they don't know how to truly push their way through Jesus. They don't know how it wasn't to hurt them, but it was to help them, and it was to strengthen them, and to learn mostly how to love one another. How to love a person just because they're going through. How to love a person not to judge them. How to love a person when you don't look, don't look down on them. You know what I'm saying? We have a lot of opinions, but we need to keep our opinions to ourselves. So we're going to go to Acts 20. Praise God. Like I said, even though I was going through, I didn't give up on God. I didn't give up on God. I just wanted to continue to go through, and it's a large tes testimony, but it's at another time. Amen? So, um, let's see. Okay, so we're gonna actually I'm gonna start Acts 20 and we're just gonna share just go to 19. 2019 verse and then we'll go over to the verse 21. Okay, Abraham, Acts chapter 20, starting from 19. Serving the Lord with all humility of mind, and with many tears and temptation, which befell me by the line of wave of Judah. And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have shown you and have taught you um, publicity and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And now behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall, um, shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witness in every city saving that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and ministry, which I have received from the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of grace of God. So so Paul was actually talking, Paul was just, you know, everybody know the, how Paul was crucified, you know, and, and, and everybody just looked at him and he was a Roman before, you know, he became um, a Christian and, you know, he had to go through a lot, but he didn't give up. He, you know, no matter how he had to go through the different towns and even going back to the Jews to preach to them, he wanted to crucify them, amen? But he kept, he, he didn't give up because he knew God was with him. He knew that if he continued to go forth, he's gonna, get done with, you know, uh, Jesus had taught him to do. He wanted to continue to go forth with the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. He wanted to testify the gospel. And that's sometimes when you, you're going through and, like I said, I, I had a affliction. People looked at me like, like, what's wrong with you? And why aren't you doing this? And why can't you do this? You know, we trust God, but you better know God for yourself. You better know that, you know, don't be so concerned about what people say, because they're going to say it. 
Learn to be able to pray for them. Learn, just, you know, learn to be able to maybe to pull them aside and pray with them. But don't, don't just, you know, I always look at a person, if, if, if they're doing whatever they're doing and it's not of God, you know, just pray in your spirit. But just pray and ask God, you know, just how you can help them. Because they're going to be the way they are. And they, like I said, sometimes you don't even know. Sometimes you don't even know you're in sin. Sometimes you just know. You don't even know how you act sometimes. God tells us to do something. And then we come to church and we may feel some type of way because you don't see someone else doing what they need, want, need to do. But that's maybe not what God told them to do. Sometimes we want to do other things. They are all great, but did God give you that ministry or that blessing for you to do. I believe that before you enter a ministry, you need to pray. You need to pray because sometimes we do this, do this, do that, but what did God tell you to do? And then you get faint and you can't continue what the Lord has called you to do because you don't have that strength. You're doing it on your own strength and you're not doing it in the spirit. And that's why we start getting frustrated. Uh, let's go over to Okay, let's go over to Matthew 26. All I'm here to say today is for the moment that God gave me to bring forth the word. Sometimes it's a little work, sometimes it's a power work. He just wants us to finish the race. He wants us to finish what he has called us to do. He wants us to go and do all things that we're supposed to do in spirit. Because if, if you're in flesh, everybody else sees you. And then they want, don't want to be a part of what he's called you to do or what the ministry you're supposed to be doing. So if we do it in the spirit, everything's going to be okay. thank God for where he's brought me at today. I thank God that he's awesome in my life. I thank God that I know now, you know, I, I just want to continue the faith and be strong in Jesus. Because if you sometimes, if you don't go through something, you can't have the, the strength and the spirit of what God is trying to tell you to do. It's much work to, to be done, saints. I can see it. Seem like I've been in church five five days this week, but it's all good. And guess what? God kept me. He strengthened me. And I just wanted to be a part of, of, of God's love and, and, and to see what the saints of Jehovah is doing. It's much greater work and all the different ministries that um, God has birthed it. So Matthew 26, 36. He's a good God. And some people pray for patience. Some people don't want patience. But you know what? Patience is good. I thank God that I don't have to rush. Sometimes we're rushing and we're running. And guess what? We, we fall. We, we faint because we're rushing. We're rushing. We're rushing because a lot of things we're not supposed to be doing. A lot of things we need to sit still and let God be the, 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 the driver. Sometimes we, we don't want God to be the driver. And you wonder why you're tired and you faint. I mean, God is good. I'm not a person that stays up all night. I've been going to bed at 6, six in the morning, been in church all day, go home, sit with Sister Trudy, we have some tea at the table. Carol said she heard us praying and, and crying. 
and praising, just giving God glory. And I thank God for the opportunities that I've had at that anointing table at Trudy's and my mother Carrie's house. It's been great. Anointed, amen. Okay, so the reason why I come forth over to Matthew 26 is, is Jesus' agony and at Gethsemane. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here, while I go and pray down her. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death tarry you here, and watch with me. And he went a little farther and fell on his face, and prayed, saying, O oh, oh my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he comes unto the disciples and findeth them to sleep, and saith unto Peter, What could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that he enter not into temptation. The spirit of me is willing, but the flesh is weak. And that's what we were talking about. If you're doing, 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 and you're not filled with God's spirit, you will faint. You will get tired. You will not have the love of Christ within you because you're agitated. You're in agony. You're weary. The cares of the world. Everybody's worried about the president and who's and Trump and Clinton and, you know, everybody's all concerned about what Trump said he's going to do this and Clinton is promising to do this and, you know, Trump is promising. I, my promise is in Jesus. I'm not going to be so concerned about what's going on. Yes, I pray. You know what I did? I just prayed and asked God, who would you have to be president? Amen? And go forth. Because if we be so concerned about what's going on, guess what? You're going to get just like the world. You're going to be so weary and part up. It's like, it's too much. It's too much for us to carry. So you just ask, ask the Lord and ask God what he would have you to do. In, in this time of your walk in ministry. <clears throat> 42. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, Oh my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same word. Then come he to his disciples and said to him, and said unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Now God has done everything for us. He's already paid the price. And even myself, I had to come to understand in a life. I, I didn't understand how it was already done. Because, you know, at the time, I'm in pain. I'm in agony. Um, I'm, I'm feeling defeat because of how people treat you. How people you think that, even your loved one, they don't understand. So I, I come to a time, a time like weary. But look at even God, even, even Jesus himself, he had to go to the Father. So that's what we're saying. When you, you, when you feel that way, just take it to Jesus. And I truly believe he answers. He answers very quickly, or he answers with the time of need. But he will answer. So then it's the point that, and once you give it to him, pray, praise him. Thank him. I believe that, you know, sometimes we spend too much time in prayer on one thing or two things. Pray what you have to pray. Thank him. You know, if you believe God and trust in God and know that, he gives all power. He, he, he teaches how to faith. He said if you have the love to give faith, you, you can move mountains. I believe that. I believe that. So then it's like, okay, you've done all this praying and praying and praying. Guess what? There's so much more to pray. We, we stuck on the same old, same old prayer. But we need to pray for others. It's a whole, whole world. A whole world, our country, is dying. And God said, and you know, things will happen, we see it, I just heard, right in West Virginia, there was another flooding, just, I don't know if anybody's seen that, that someone had told me. That's right there, flooding. 
Just pray, go on, and, 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 and pray for what God tells us to pray for. Amen? But prayer is so needed, but let's not spend our time on one prayer. Like Jesus, he was in the, the garden of Gethsemane. He wanted, that, he wanted the disciples to pray. He went back the third time, but he went to his father, and he asked God if this cup will pass. Let it be, but not my will, but your will. God, whatever you want me to, to do, let it be your will, but not my will. Do we find ourselves saying that? Do we find ourselves, well, let me just do this, let me do this. We pray, and we have to pray and ask God for all things. I remember Sister Grace, how she used to, um, she said when she used to cook those little desserts, the pecans, no, God, what's the pecans? What's the desserts, Sister Grace cook? But she said she always prayed. She's praying while she's cooking. That's a blessing, but sometimes I find myself, if I'm tired, Lord, bless this food. Have this food to be great, God. I look in the mirror sometimes and I don't even feel that I'm, I'm either worthy or I don't feel beautiful today. I look in the mirror and I say, Lord, let me look like you, Jesus. Let me shine like you, Jesus. Everything you need is in God. You know, we all need different things. Yeah, sometimes people may think that, but we all have different trials and tribulations to go to. But go to your Father, and then we won't have to to go through it so much. Okay, the reason why I had to go through the four years of affliction and whatever, I and mean, I'm still going through it, because I have, it, it's a whole book, it's a whole ministry. That's a whole ministry. So when God is ready to truly have me where I'm supposed to be, but I didn't give up, he's still teaching me. Yes. He's teaching me. And you look at four years, he's still teaching you why to just pray. Aren't you just praying and we got healing? I am healed. I am healed because he's already done it on the cross. And I had to learn how to do it. But I'm, I'm in pain now, Lord. But it's already done. So Jesus, thank you for healing. It's already done. And I had to I had to grasp the pole of that. Because I was more beating myself up. I was more ruling myself. I was bringing myself more pain and stress. Me. Me. I'm not, you know, it's, it was me. But God was teaching me. He was teaching me. And I just thank him. But he went, he went to his father. When he felt so weary, he went to his father. And I thank God that everything we need is in the word of God. It's, it's so in the word of God. So do you need stirring up? Stir your, your spirit up. Stir your spirit up to worship and to praise. And I know sometimes, you know, yes, we're tired, but guess what? If God is in it, you don't have to worry. I, uh, this is just some, um, some uh, just some encouraging words uh, by an author, um, Ken Copeland, and he, they're, they're faith people. I had to deal with that same thing in my own life. I had to stop doing good things just because they needed doing. Instead, I had to stick to what I, I'm all to do. Sometimes we forget, yes, it may look good, but are you called to do it? Yes, you can volunteer to help, that's okay, but are you called to do it? Because it's, it's so much work to be done. Maybe it's time for you to trim away the extra things you've added and to get back what God has called you to do. Go back and stir up the original commission it's holy. It's your personal calling. So we need to pray and, and, and just go back to God. And God, what is it that you want me to do? Uh, help me to go forth. I went to um, Monday um, prayer uh, for the ladies. And ladies, if you're available, just come out as an hour. You know the anointing? Just for an hour of prayer for the women? It was anointed. Pray to God and just bring it forth prayer. Praying in need, praying for the church, praying, you, you're doing great things for the community, but come together. You know, we need to be together in unity. There's more power, more power. So ladies, if you're free, I'm sure there's transportation available somehow, amen? But if you're free Monday morning, come for an hour, what's an hour? Look at Jesus, he went and prayed for an hour. He was on his knees, but you know, Let's not just want to come just, you know, when you feel you need it. So praise God. 
So I wanted to just thank God and just continue your faith. Continue to give love in God. And one thing I've learned is God loves me. And sometimes, it, you know, when I didn't feel just love or I didn't feel even love for my family, I go, you know, they love you. But I just didn't feel it. You know, I had to go to God. And God just, he just clears everything. Amen. He just, he just takes, he takes every burden. And maybe I'm not preaching to the ones that need this, but I guess I'm still preaching to myself. But God is an awesome God. You know, don't let us get too high and hope that we don't need prayer or we don't need each other. Because it's so needed. It's so needed. Because we get too hard for it ourselves. And then of course you're supposed to love your family and be there for your family. You're talking about seven days a week. How much more time are you going to give God or God's house or being there for Bishop and First Lady? Because it's needed. It's needed. Two people can't do a, a, a ministry when it's a hundred and some people. You Keep your time. And I know you hear this over and over and over. Guess what? You hear it again because this is what God is saying. This is what God is saying. It's not about me. And I tell you, it's not about me. It's not about me. It's about Jesus. And I want to, I now have, I want to continue my want to, to stir up my faith, to stir up my gifts, to go forth and do God. Finish your race what God has given you. Finish your race what God has started. Keep the faith and continue. If you continue in Jesus, everything else will look good. I'm serious, I'm telling you. So that, that person you can't get along with, the person you don't want to see, I went to that. I used to love you. There was these two uh, people that used to come to the house. And I used to say, oh Lord, here they come. They're not, they're coming to get fed, and that's one thing. But sometimes I need to be fed. Oh my God. But anyway, I need to be fed. Praise God. I, 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 I need to be, speak to me, give me a word. Give me prayer. So anyways, so of course, comes to the point, I need to, I need to pray for them. Because it's not a God when you don't want to give that person what they need, especially in your ministry. You're giving them, first of all, you're giving them love. That's, if we love Jesus, we should love our fellow brother, sister, you know, and, and when we're all in Christ, that's what we are. So I started praying for them because they were more taken, 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 you know? So, and, and they just wanted to hear the word to be lifted up, and that's all well and fine. But it seems like they come at the unusual times when you can call them from where I'm resting right now, but can you come later and let me just get a nap in or something? They'll just pop over, pop over, pop over. Which is all good, but sometimes, you know, you get tired. So anyways, I start praying for them. And then here they come again. I'm like, oh. but you know what? When I stopped praying for them, it's, they started changing. So God had to show me, well, you already prayed for them. So they started, they were bringing me gifts. Like, but just because I did, when I, when I felt them being a burden and I was weary down, I prayed. Prayer is so important, thanks. And I know you know this. You can know it all you want, but are you doing it? We can know it. We know so many things, but are you doing it? Are you showing it? Amen? But God, just like that, he turned it around just like that. And then it was great. The, the friendship grew, amen. And not like I wanted gifts, you know what I'm saying? But God put it on their spirit to, to also, they were also coming to receive, but they were also giving. So it works together, same. It works together, amen. So I just want to thank God and, 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 and his love and all that he's doing. But just, just, and I know it, it, everything we need is in the word. Sometimes if you feel weary, just go to the Word. If you need healing, go to the Word. If you need encouragement, go to the Word. If you need faith, go to the Word. Anything you need, if you even know, if you even need to know how to love, think about Jesus. 
because he loves all of us. He doesn't love anyone any short of mustard seed or anyone short of his glory. He loves us. And the more you seek him, the more you read, the more you love him, God can show you so many things. He can just show you the inside spirit of who he is. But if you're not there, you won't see it and you're missing out. You're missing out on God's glory, you know? He'll, he'll tell you everything. He'll show you so, so many wonderful things God shows you. He, he protects you. He'll let you see stuff before it even happens. And like, um, brother, um, uh, brother Hobbs, the, the oldest son, um, Franklin, Frank, yeah, Franklin, how there was a delay at the train station. But guess what? He said people were pounding, trying to get in, and they were all there, but they wasn't there at the exact time. So the man closed the door. But guess what? It was at a point in time. He seen, because he knows God is spirit. It wasn't a delay, but it was one time for God to be able to minister to someone else. So if you run, if you think you're running, if I, if I run away, you know what? I heard God give me favor, whatever. I found myself not to rush. I don't rush anymore. I take my time and just be able to absorb God and then to be able to listen. But if you're running, 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 that's why God used to get me up 3 o'clock in the morning because I was always running, running. This is my big didn't walk to God. Running, 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 running. And not spending no time with Jesus. I come to church, of course, but I'm still running, running, running. I'm not getting any personal time with God. So now it's like, I don't have to worry. God gets me where I need to be at the appointed time, the right time. If you're delayed on the highway, guess what? I don't worry about complain. Just pray. It's all for a reason. And when you know God, you know it's all for a reason. No, man, it's, it's late, da, da, da. No, it's all for a reason. And I just thank God for this opportunity to bring forth the word. Please, it's not, it's not to hurt you, but it's to have me grow with Jesus. Amen? Because this little vessel right here, it's, it's nothing that I can do without God. I love that song you sang. Oh my goodness. You can't do nothing. You, you can't do nothing without God. Hmm? Oh, Christ is enough. Everything we need is so true. That song, girl, that was beautiful. It just touched my soul. Everything we need is in Him. You can't do anything. And, I mean, you wake up in the morning, you need Jesus. You walk out of your room. I'm going to give you one testimony and then I'm going to um, pray for uh, We moved into this um, house. I love the house. I thank God. He always opened the doors for the best place. It's across the street from the church. Um, not the church that we attend, but it's across the street. We got like four houses on this, the whole street. It's beautiful. It's quiet. Trees. And so anyways, not knowing about the house, in the house that um, we rented from an older couple, it was the... Um, the lady's sister that lived in the house. So they didn't know, they was always wondering, why it's so hot in, in the bedrooms that are sleeping? It's just so hot, and they didn't know. And so we, the, the first night, even the fans wasn't working. Nothing was working. Got central air, it just wasn't working. And not knowing, like, oh my goodness, but you know what, God is gonna work it out. God is gonna work it out. But the, the third night, it was just unbearable. Anyways, we went to sleep. And um, I woke up. I just, I was sleeping good though. I was sleeping good. Woke up. God just popped me up. When I woke up, I could not breathe. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't, nothing. There was no oxygen. And my husband was sound asleep. So only, I heard this Holy Spirit. He said, get up and go to the door. And when I got up and I went to the outside the bedroom door, there was air, there was oxygen coming in. I mean, God woke me out of my sleep. I could have died right then and there because I could not, I could have died and went to sleep right then and there because there was nothing. There was no air in me. There was nothing. And when I woke up, the spirit said, go to the door. And, and I spoke with like Lacey or someone. They were like, well, you know, if you have a problem, you, you you wake your husband or your spouse up. You know, you wake them up. That's a normal thing to do. But wait a minute. The Spirit told me to go to the door. I wasn't worried about my husband. He was fine, evidently. The Spirit said go to the door. Because that night, I wake 
wasted one second. Maybe I wouldn't have made it. I couldn't have. Because why would I wait? The Holy Spirit woke me up. Go to the Lord. That's it. Oh, just, and I couldn't breathe. And it took me, thank God for the oxygen. But you know what? I went through, and thank God he brought me through it. But I know how a person would go without oxygen. That's dead. That, you know how we, yeah, it's, it's not a good feeling. It's not a good feeling. But I just thank God if I not heard the spirit of the Lord, but if I not listen. You can hear it, but are you listening? You always hear the testimony. Oh, testimony. Um, you want to go left when Jesus say go right. Do you listen and go around? Or do you listen and just, you have to go forth and go forth and see the things that, or go into the trouble that you could have avoided if you would have went um, to the right. But I've been enjoying myself. Praise the Lord. We are leaving uh, tomorrow morning. I wish I could prolong it a little bit, but my husband really missed me now. So I said, oh, I'm just going to stay another week. He's like, oh, no, no, no. No, 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 no. So, but I listen to and I just thank God. Father God, we just thank you so much for the word, God. We thank you for all that you do, God. I just thank you for, the, for your spirit, Lord Jesus, how you lead and guide us, Father God. You're such a good God that you can just float us up anywhere in the spirit of where you want us to be, to take us wherever you want, God. You're such a good God. You show us, we, we, we see, you show us vision, God. You show us all that we want to do, God. And Lord, I just ask you to bless the people today that are here, God. Bless them and help them, Father God, to see truly who you are, to go forth and, and whatever they desire in their prayer, Father God. I ask you to answer right now, Lord. Touch them right now, God. Lord, because I know we, we lack in some areas, Father God. Because I know I did, Lord, but through you and with you, God, I wouldn't be standing here today, God. I give you honor and glory, Father God. That, that giving me the opportunity, Lord, to stand before your people today, Lord. And I and I thank you for your glory, Father God. We thank you for our bishop, bishop and first lady, that um, the shepherd over this house, God, my spiritual mom and, and dad, Lord. I thank you so much for them because if without if they would not have obedience, God, I would be the the flourished woman of God that I am today. And I thank you for that. Bless each and every soul. We thank you in Jesus' name and grace. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.
we may grow thereby acknowledge your presence always. We thank you because you are faithful, you are kind, you are true. Lord, we pray, O God, that you continue to send each and every one of us all our endeavors, but the strength that we need to go from day to day. We pray, O God, that you bless your people right now, O God, as we give back, O God, in support of what you have started in this place. Bless each and every heart to say, we are back in Jesus' name. Amen. You can just come to the uh,
This is not a ritual. This is a dedication. Amen. Hannah was in need and want of, of a child. She prayed to the Lord, and the Lord granted her request. And when Samuel was born, she brought him back and presented him to the church, presented him to the priest, presented him to God. And this is the child that we prayed for. When we break what you've done for how you allowed us to prosper in this thing. Praise the Lord, we have the the child is Jasmine. Jasmine. Salome. Karen. Parents are Angel and Jeanette Salone. God parents standing here. Hector Gonzalez. Hector Gonzalez. Okay, I'm going to say. Vanessa Luca. All right. Thank God for all that are standing with her again. We uh, we don't do this as a, as a ritual. We're going to do it as a as other than what it is. A presentation of God. Thank you, God, for the child that you born. We uh, Bishop often reminds the grandparents that this is the responsibility, that the godparents that this is the responsibility that the the child will be guided. The child will be one to this. Parish. Most times, think about God, Father, God, Mother, they like dresses, they like toys, they like all these things. And that's good, but sometimes the parents are going to need a break. They're going to need somebody to come by and say, well, we'll take you. We'll take you out for a while. We'll give you a few hours. We'll give you maybe a night. We'll give you some time to refresh yourself, to, to recharge, to be ready to continue to, to bring this child up, and God will have to grow. But we thank God again. We thank God for the life. The, the, uh, the, the idea that we have in, in modern society that somehow we control life is a mistake. Life comes from God. God gives life. God has the only one that has the right to take the word. So when we come back with the child, when we come back with a new life to dedicate the child, we're saying, thank you, God, for the gift that you've given, understanding that she belongs to God. He's given her to you, and you have a responsibility to train her up to the fear and the fear. Thank <laughs> you. 